Since Snake's Revenge on the NES, there has been numerous Metal Gear games that were made without the full supervision of its creator, Hideo Kojima. But Metal Gear Survive marks the first time a game has been developed without Kojima working at Konami. Is the final product so bad it makes you want to... Or is the game actually really good? You know... You're alright. Metal Gear Survive takes place after the attack on Mother Base at the end of Ground Zeroes. You play as one of the soldiers in Big Boss's army that gets sucked into a wormhole and awakens in the world of Dite, which is inhabited by zombies known as Wanderers. The setup is bizarre, but Metal Gear has always had a reputation for being weird. The opening cutscene is well directed, and seeing the aftermath with the dead soldiers makes an impression on the player. But the narrative quickly disappears and only resumes towards the end with some clever plot twists. Most of the story is presented through coded conversations, which makes a welcome return in Metal Gear Survive, but the characters fail to be engaging or memorable. The voice acting is serviceable, but the dialogue from your AI handler starts to grate on your ears. Your proposal is extremely illogical. I have to conclude that your reaction is extremely illogical. Metal Gear Survive replaces tactical stealth with survival gameplay similar to State of Decay. While it's possible to sneak up on enemies and take them down a single blow, the majority of encounters lean towards the loud side. Since you can be overwhelmed by zombies, you have to carefully time your attacks and take it slow. The arsenals comprise of melee weapons, explosives and guns. Materials for bullets are scarce, so you'll need to rely heavily on melee combat. The game also offers defensive gadgets such as fences, decoys, barbed wires, sandbags, and even a barbecue grill. This encourages experimentation as you combine these weapons and gadgets during a skirmish. But remember, Captain, a journey of a thousand miles wasn't built in a day. Most of the campaign is comprised of doing the same handful of tasks. Gathering resources, rescuing survivors, and defending bases. Initially getting to the objective is a frustrating experience since vehicles are scarce and this forces you to walk to your destination. It doesn't help that your character has low stamina and can only run a few seconds before he becomes tired. I recommend leveling up your endurance since this allows you to run for several minutes without fatigue. Activating waypoints no doubt makes transversal across these environments quicker, but the drab landscape and restrictive stamina can make exploration feel tedious. However, the biggest barrier of entry is the game's annoying hunger and thirst meter. Hunting for food was a major mechanic in Metal Gear Solid 3, but at least plants and animals were easy to find. In Metal Gear Survive, there isn't a reliable source of food or water in the first couple of chapters. To make matters worse, your hunger and thirst meter depletes at a rapid pace, affecting your vision, stamina and health. Eventually you'll gather resources to build water tanks and farms, but the time it takes to grow produce is upwards of 4 hours. It feels like an intentional design choice to sell microtransactions, which I'll discuss momentarily. Take off your shirt. What? But when I leveled up my endurance, crafted better gear, and built an efficient base, the game transforms into a enjoyable romp. Experimenting with a huge arsenal and trying to create the most effective strategy to fight zombies was a gratifying experience. The game reaches its apex on the second map, where the drab deserts are replaced with a lush jungle setting. The encounters also become more exciting with enemies throwing explosives and ones disguised as plants that grab you by the ankles. When all the different enemy types in your arsenal unite in concert, the game turns into a thrilling experience that had me coming back for more. The most engaging aspect is the base building where you can build facilities that produce resources and craft new items. Similar to the Phantom Pain, you have to assign recruits to various teams to help improve the efficiency of your base. Seeing my base grow and come to life was definitely the most satisfying part of this game. I am going to make you suffer. Until you remember what pain is. Metal Gear Survive uses the Fox engine from Metal Gear Solid 5 and runs at 60 frames per second, which is still very impressive for an open world game on a home console. Artistically, the game is on the drab side, and the enemy designs aren't exactly inspired. The orchestral music gets the job done, but aside from the title screen, none of the tracks really stand out. Forgive me. 
While gameplay and artistic choices can be subjective, there's no defending the microtransactions and the required online connection. It's inexcusable for a single player campaign to demand an online connection when the PlayStation Network is prone to failure. Not to mention the physical release will become a coaster when the service gets switched off. The microtransactions I mentioned earlier come in the form of SV coins, which can be purchased from the PlayStation Store. These can be used to speed up the production of resources on your base. It's obvious the long initial grind is a trick to open your wallet. Extra inventory slots are also locked behind a paywall. But the most offensive microtransactions being forced to pay 15 Australian dollar dues for an extra save slot. The sleaze is off the charts. When you first start playing Metal Gear Survive, it's a tedious experience. But after spending 10 hours grinding for better gear, I started to enjoy the base building and defense missions. But going through 10 hours of tedium isn't exactly an enticing proposition, when the game is full of microtransactions and demands an online connection. Which is a real shame because buried underneath all this sleaze and rubbish lies a decent entry in the survival genre. Oh man, I am so gonna die. If anyone out there is listening, please, I have a last request. That pile of magazines under my bed, get rid of them before anyone finds them. No one can ever know, okay? 